tutti venite armati, o oh, forti miei soldati, fa la 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 la, fa la 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 la, tutti venite armati, o oh, forti miei soldati, fa la 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 la, fa la 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 la, io sono di vita amore, giusto salettatore, non temete punto, ma in bella schiera uniti, me seguitate a diti. The next stage in our musical tour of the 16th century brings us home to England at one of the most splendid eras of our history. The fashion for madrigals caught on at the very climax of the Elizabethan period, an era which seems in many ways to have been England's springtime. Now is the month of May when merry lads are playing. Fa la 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 la, fa la 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 la. Now is the month of May when merry lads are playing. Fa la 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 la, fa la 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 la. Each with his bonny lass upon the greeny grass. Fa la 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 la, fa la 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 la. Each with his bonny lass upon the greeny grass. Fa la 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 la. The spring clad all in gladness, the laugh of winter sadness. Fa la 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 la, fa la 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 la. The spring clad all in gladness, the laugh of winter sadness. Fa la 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 la, fa la 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 la. And to the back my sound, the nymphs tread out the ground. Fa la 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 la. And to the back my sound. Fine and wise it we musing, you sweet delight refusing. Fa la 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 la, fa la 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 la. Fine and wise it we musing, you sweet delight refusing. Fa la 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 la, fa la 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 la. Sweet and tender and sweet, shall we play barley bread? Fa la 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 la. Say dainty nymphs and speak. Shall we play Barney Gray? La 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 la. We began with that well-known madrigal by Thomas Morley because it was he, more than anyone else, who led the English in the craze that set the whole country singing at the end of the 16th century. It has brought us here to Penshurst Place in Kent, not in May, as the gardeners amongst you will easily recognise. But in the height of summer, actually, this garden has been here since 1346, though the Doomsday Book records a great house standing on this site 300 years before that. Over the 900 years since then, both house and grounds have been continually extended and improved, most notably in the Tudor period, when Penshurst had close connections with successive monarchs. But before we look inside the house, we're going to sing one of the many songs the Elizabethans wrote about birds. This one by John Bartlett is about a pet sparrow called, rather misleadingly, Philip, since it's apparently female. Its species is rather ambiguous too. Perhaps beneath a thin disguise of feathers, this is a human female we're talking about. Of all the birds that I do know, Philip my sparrow hath no peer. Or sit she high, or sit she low, be she far off or be she near. There is no bird so fair, so fine, nor yet so fresh as this of mine. For when she once hath felt her feet, Philip will cry, say yet, 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 yet. Come in the morning, Mary Lee. When Philip hath been lately fed, or in an evening soberly, when Philip list to go to bed, it is a hem to hear my fib, how she can chirp with merry lip. For when she once hath felt a fit, Philip will cry still yet, 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 yet. For when she once had felt a fit, Philip will cry still yet, 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 yet. She never wanders far abroad 
but is at home when I do call. If I command, she lays on load, with lips, with teeth, with tongue and all. She chants, she chants, she makes such cheer, that I believe she hath no peer. For when she once hath felt a fit, Philip will cry still yet, 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 yet. For when she once hath felt a fit, Philip will cry still yet, 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 yet. Penshurst became the property of King Henry VIII when the previous owner, the third Duke of Buckingham, fell out of favour and was beheaded. Henry had a passionate interest in music. He was an accomplished player of several instruments, wrote songs and composed music for the church. He also owned a large manuscript collection from which our next song is taken. This lovely song, Our Robin, is not strictly a madrigal but it does give us some idea of the native song tradition onto which the Italian form was grafted later in that century. It's a dialogue between two men about their respective lovers. Layman is the old form of the word. The first says that his love loves someone else. The second, that he's sure his lady is faithful. The song comes from a manuscript collection owned by Henry VIII. Did it perhaps strike a chord with that much married king? Penshurst was the birthplace and home of one of the most prominent figures of Elizabeth's England. Sir Philip Sidney was a poet, a scholar and a courtier. Of all the men of wit and intellect that surrounded Elizabeth at court, he was the most outstanding. His portrait hangs here in the long gallery beside his queen. Just as Sir Philip paid tribute to Elizabeth in his pastoral poem Arcadia, so too did the madrigalists. In 1601, Morley published a collection of 23 madrigals entitled The Triumphs of Oriana, each of which ends with the words Long Live Fair Oriana, which was one of the many poetic names given to the Queen. The collection was an enormous popular success, though scholars maintain that musically it was a bit of a mixed bag. But this song, Come Blessed Bird, by Edward Johnson, is as fine as any. The bonny boots referred to in the text was Elizabeth's pet name for one of her favourite courtiers. He died young, as we shall hear, but apart from being a spectacular dancer, he was evidently the star of the top line in madrigal singing. In the end, the wood-born minstrel of Diana, the blessed bird of the title, is persuaded to take his place, trilling away on his finest top note. 